good happy sunday morning february 7 2021 i'm riley king and welcome to this sunday morning edition of politics with riley king we have a lot of political news to get to this sunday morning so let's begin this sunday edition of politics with riley king right now hopefully you're all having a great sunday morning everyone and happy sunday dive in right now. First up, Stepanek Tucker re-elected NHGOP leader by state committee members. Stepanek Tucker re-elected NHGOP leaders by state committee members. Members of the Republican state committee have overwhelmingly decided to keep Stephen Stepanek of Amherst as the party's chair and Pamela Tucker of Rye as the vice chair for another two years. Former NH GOP chair Jennifer Horn parts ways with anti-Trump Lincoln Project Super PAC. Horn cites accusations against fellow group co-founder Waver. Former state Republican chair, party chair Jennifer Horn confirmed Friday night she has parted ways with the anti-Trump Lincoln Project, citing Jeskiro accusations against another co-founder, John Waver, by nearly two dozen men of soliciting sexual favors in return for jobs. The New York Times first reported Horn's resignation and she provided a full statement to WMUR. Upon careful consideration, I have terminated my relationship with the Lincoln Project effective immediately, Horn wrote. John Waver's inappropriate behavior compelled with his long-standing distribution and concern that behavior are sickening. She added, it's clear at this point that my views about how the Lincoln Project effects are managed and the best way to move the Lincoln Project forward into the future in the wake of these awful events have divided. Horn declined to elaborate on the, that stance when contacted by WMUR. State RNC members say says in her parties there's argument New Hampshire should have first primary. Nevada GOP official says they support current order of early voting states, keeping New Hampshire first, their state third. New Hampshire Republican National Committee woman Juliana Bergeron said Friday she's been fielding calls from concerned Granite State GOP members after a report surfaced this week that officials in Nevada will push to move their presidential nomination contest ahead of New Hampshire in 2024. U.S. Senate prepares for a second impeachment trial against Trump. New Hampshire Democrat senators to consider incitement of insurrection charge. Let's take a listen to that video from WMUR News 9. This Subaru of New England, Washington's birthday sales event is here. Feel the freedom in an all-wheel drive 2021 Subaru Crosstrek. Former President Donald Trump will go on trial in the U.S. Senate next week, impeached by the House for incitement of insurrection. The January 6th attack on the U.S. Capitol by a pro-Trump mob resulted in death and desecration as rioters tried to stop the counting of electoral votes. The worst action 
any president could do is to try and overturn a free and fairly elected government. That's essentially a coup on the United States of America. The substance of this trial is unique because it involves a direct assault on the legislative branch of government now sitting in judgment of the former president. Because this happened to the Congress and to the Senate, does this trial need to be two or three weeks? Because everybody saw what they saw. Well, it's not just about what happened on January 6th. It's also about the events that led up to January 6th. Should the former president be compelled to testify under oath? You know, that's his attorneys and the House impeachment managers will make that determination. What we heard this week is that the president is not going to testify under oath. You know, given the president's, the former president's inability to tell the truth, it's, um, it would be very interesting to have him sworn in. In a statement to News 9, Senator Maggie Hassan said, quote, Given former President Trump's numerous public comments surrounding the insurrection, it is not necessary for him to testify. But he should, of course, have the opportunity to defend himself against the serious charges that he faces if he chooses. Adam Sexton, WMUR, News Now. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. New Hampshire Trump loyalist formally removed from base remaining panel by Biden administration. White House removed from panel after the Biden administration put on hold many last minute Donald Trump appointments to Defense Department related advisory boards. One granite stater has now received word that he's out. Is Edelblut nomination a clue to Sununu's thinking on future plans? Governor Chris Sununu accelerated the ever churning political speculation waters Wednesday when he moved early to nominate Frank Edelblut to a second term as the state's commissioner of education. Etta Blute's current four-year term does not expire until March 23rd. And while the governor would not have been expected to wait that long to make a nomination, a full six weeks ahead of this of time is well early. And that does it for this Sunday edition of Politics with Riley King. Thank you for joining us for this Sunday edition of Politics with Riley King. Have a great rest of your Sunday, everyone. I'll see you back here next Sunday for another edition of Politics with Riley King. And have a great week ahead of you, everybody. Goodbye.